You're gonna eat that steak and you're gonna instantly be wrinkly. And then you eat another bite of that brisket and you better believe you're gonna start having gray chest hair. It's just the way it works. interesting evidence that people like to cherry pick when it comes down to red meat and aging. Now, when you look at the data, you can extrapolate some potential causation, but nothing is really causation when it comes down to that. One of the pieces of evidence that people pick apart all the time when it comes down to red meat and aging has to do with what are called advanced glycation end products. Now, what those are is they are basically components of proteins, sometimes components of lipids that are in sort of a reduced form that react with proteins and sometimes other various things within our bodies to form what are called glycosylated proteins. So this is the one that's picked apart the most, right? It's assumed that if you have high levels of AGEs, advanced glycation end products within your body, that you can potentially age faster. There is a fair bit of evidence with advanced glycation in products and not necessarily aging, but more so inflammation, which can potentially influence how our DNA really acts and potentially even kill cells. So indirectly, yes, there's an effect on aging, but there's recently been a lot of people talking about how red meat and eating red meat will make you look older. So I wanna break down a few components of that. So let's go ahead and dive in. After today's video, whether you eat red meat or not, I do recommend you check out Thrive Market. There's a 25% off discount link for Thrive Market. So whether you're doing paleo, whether you're vegan, maybe you're lacto ovo vegetarian, there is something for everybody there. And everything gets delivered to your doorstep. So that's the coolest thing. It's like an online grocery store. It's kind of like going to Whole Foods. You can really find a lot of the things that you would find at Whole Foods, but they even have a little scanner that you could like use the app on your phone to see if you could get it cheaper at Thrive Market. Because a lot of times you can get things for a less or price at Thrive Market and then they get delivered to your doorstep. Plus, you never have to leave the comfort of your home. And for me, I don't have to schlep the kids around. It's just super easy. So that link down below will save you 25% off your initial grocery order at Thrive Market. Plus you get a free gift. So check them out. That link's down below. As soon as you drop down the description, it's in that first line there. Okay, so there was a study that was published in the journal Circulation that I thought was pretty interesting because it compared red meat to processed meat. Okay, in the case of what is going to potentially cause uh, cardiovascular disease or type 2 diabetes. And this wasn't a small study. It took a look at 20 different studies. It was a meta-analysis with over a million people. Okay, and what this study ultimately determined was that red meat was not the driver of cardiovascular disease and red meat was not seeming to be the driver of type 2 diabetes. What was, was processed meat. In this particular case, processed meat drove up the risk of cardiovascular disease or coronary heart disease by 42% and drove up the risk of type 2 diabetes by 19%. And why did they figure this was the case? Well, it did come down to advanced glycation in the products. Okay, well, at least that's what the researchers speculated. So again, when you get these glycosylated proteins that come especially from like highly adulterated food or meat that has been heavily processed, like bologna or spam or any kind of like heavily processed meat, then yes, you do have a significantly higher level advanced glycation in products. And if you look at the data, like there was a study that was published in the journal Cardiovascular Research that demonstrated that advanced glycation in products do ultimately end up encouraging sort of the trapping, if you want to call it that, of like plasma proteins, things like that, that can trigger more like vessel rigidity and at that rate also limit what is called nitric oxide synthase or NO2, basically the precursor to NO2, which allows a blood vessel to be more relaxed. More relaxed the blood vessel, the more stretchy it is and blood can kind of flow through it and you have less ability for plaque to form and things like that. So there's a fair bit of evidence with advanced glycation in products in cardiovascular disease. Another thing we have to look at is the correlation between advanced glycation in products and what are called oxidized LDL particles. Look at LDL being high, although some people might fight me on this, LDL being high I think is still a general cause for concern. I know, might be freaking you out a little bit. Let me caveat that. There are multiple different forms. Okay, multiple different particle sizes. We're not going to go into exquisite detail in this video because that's not the purpose. I generally think for the general population that looking at your LDL is a good marker. You should pay attention to it. And I know I'll catch some heat from the keto world, but I have to say it for a general term, pay attention to it. 
but oxidized LDL is the LDL that has been acted upon by inflammation, okay, and it's become oxidized, or it's been acted upon more so by reactive oxygen species and become oxidized. Oxidized LDL is definitely not good, and that is fairly unanimous across the board. Most people will agree oxidized LDL is bad. So advanced glycation end products can drive that value up. So it's seeming in this particular case that, hmm, maybe it's the processed meat that's the problem, not necessarily the red meat. Now the other situation we do have to look at is some people will claim that red meat is going to drive up reactive oxygen species because the lipids can oxidize. Generally speaking, with red meat, you're looking at a relatively high saturated fat content, which to a certain degree I can have beef with, no pun intended, if you're overdoing it, possibly. But with saturated fats, saturated fats don't usually oxidize. Okay, that's not the problem. They're saturated, so they're stable. Here's how oxidation occurs. Oxidation occurs, like if you were to take a saturated fat, if I were to give you a visual, a saturated fat is where all the hydrogen bonds, are, you're saturated, everything is saturated, so there's no open seats at the table, in other words. Basically, you have a fat that is fully saturated with hydrogen. That is what makes it stable. If you take another fat, like a polyunsaturated fat, like maybe a fish oil or something, fish oil is good, so that's a bad example, maybe some other kind of just fat that is not saturated, and you take that same situation, it is a monounsaturated or a polyunsaturated, which means that there are one or more unsaturated seats at the table. What happens then is when the seats are not available, bad things can't come in and oxidize. But when there's an open seat at the table because there's not hydrogen bonds there, that's when oxidation or reactive oxygen species can go ahead and have a seat at the table and occupy that and has more room to affect it negatively. So in order of stability, saturated fats are the most stable, then monounsaturated fats are the next most stable, and polyunsaturated fats are the least stable. Stability doesn't matter for good or bad. It just means for rancidity and for reactive oxygen species impacting it. So since red meat has pretty low levels of monounsaturated fat and very low levels of, if any, polyunsaturated fat, that's really not an argument. So that's one of the ones that you might see on like a random website or something like that that's just trying to make a gimmicky blog. What we do have to pay attention to is higher amounts of saturated fat taking up a percentage of your calories might not be as good as if you were to skew some of those calories to come from say olive oil or avocado oil if you ask me. Those that are maybe doing a carnivore diet might be in a different situation because those are just off the table entirely. But for a general diet, yeah, I usually say like maybe 20% of your fats should come from saturated fats and the rest of them should probably come from poly and monounsaturated fats, mainly the Mediterranean style fats. So this video is coming from a guy that doesn't eat a ton of red meat, okay? I'm not trying to be like pro red meat all the way. I'm someone that eats it maybe twice a week in moderation, but I also recognize when there's a lot of BS and nonsense out on the internet and I'm trying to like point it out a little bit. Another thing that people tend to pick apart a lot with red meat is the charring on it, okay? The charring of supposedly can be a carcinogenic. And when you look at some of the data, it's very, very correlational. It's not necessarily tried and true, but some of the pieces that people also look at with red meat, I mean, they're concerned flat out that the char and those uh, heterocyclic amines that are a result of charring are going to be bad. Well, I don't know about you, but I have actually burned some chicken breast before, and I've also burned chicken thigh. I've even burned fish. I'm pretty good at burning things, and I'll tell you that red meat's not the only thing that burns. So when it comes down to any potential discussion surrounding char, that is not necessarily red meat specific. I don't know for certain, but you can pretty much char anything, and that effect in and of itself might just be the denaturing of the proteins, the denaturing of some of the carbons, and that impact on our body could drive up reactive oxygen species to deal with that. Okay, so when you look at the big picture, I just encourage you to look at all data. Advanced glycation end products are never good, but there are other components of our diet that are affecting glycation and affecting these glycosylated compounds that end up triggering inflammation and end up triggering these issues later on down the line. So do I think that red meat's the issue? Not necessarily. I think it's the lack of consumption of other things that might counteract any potential negative impact of red meat. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.